So, in the previous video I showed you how to simulate a queuing system um, with one doctor and one nurse, uh, uh, two servers sequentially serving to, uh, a stream of customers. Uh, but uh, we did this manually and you see we, we, we did a lot, we had to do a lot of work to just simulate five patients, uh, arrivals and services. And uh, this is of course very time consuming and in practice you don't want to do this because in practice what we need to do is we need to simulate much more customers and we need to repeat this experiment. This is just one experiment. We need to repeat it uh, preferably a large number of times to get some good estimates for parameters, right? Like this average time in system or average number of customers in the system, right? This is just one experiment with five patients. Uh, that's not enough to conclude that the average time in the system is about 17 minutes. So to, to do some a better job, right, we can use Excel. And I prepared here, I'm not going to explain in very much in detail what's happening, but you will recognize this is the same table that we had before. We have customer, now I simulated 20 customers. I have 20 random numbers, now I have, a, as you can see, a function that computes a random number here. I have inter-arrival time, which basically uses the mapping, there is a complex if function here, that uses the mapping to compute inter-arrival time from the random number, and you will see that it correctly does computation of inter-arrival for 60, 60 falls in the second range, and it is actually 10 uh, minutes of inter-arrival. And then I compute arrival. It's actually very easy to compute arrival because it is just the previous arrival plus inter-arrival is the new arrival, right? And it is actually computed like this. So then I can compute st service start. The interesting thing is how do we compute service start at the nurse? It's a maximum of finish with the previous patient and the arrival of the next patient. So you will see this patient starts at minute 32 and then waiting we can compute it here also easily as the difference between service start and arrival. See computations here are quite easy. The finish of the service is this plus 7. Service time is always 7. I put a constant column. Similar computations for the doctor. Again there is a random number so the service time is done right computed through a mapping you can you can uh, study this if function you can also do it actually with a vlookup function right and then we can compute time in the system as before it's the difference between finish time at the with with the doctor the service of the service at the doctor and uh, arrival time so you'll see again it varies here and you see i computed here an average so an average of this column is the average time in the system and you'll notice that we, we received a very different value, right? 28.5 minutes. So much more than in our manual simulation, in our initial manual simulation. And uh, this is, again, this is only one experiment, even though it is a bit larger, 20 customers, right? It is just one experiment. So wh what I would like to do is, I, I would like to repeat this experiment a number of times for a proper simulation. And you can do this in the simple example by pressing F9. If you press F9, you will recompute the whole spreadsheet. And because of this, all the random numbers will change. Notice I'm pressing F9 right now. All the random numbers changed. So because the simulation depends on the random numbers, arrival, service time, start, finish, uh, the, the, the service time at the doctor, so start, finish will also depend. And you'll see we'll get a different stream of patients, like on another, for example, as if they arrive on another day with a different randomness. And you'll see now average waiting time on this day is almost 16 minutes, so much less. And I can repeat this by pressing F9. Notice this number will vary. Sometimes it's large, sometimes it's small, right? And uh, so we could collect these numbers, and this is actually what I did already. Uh, uh, so you have here the second sheet in this, uh, the worksheet in this, in this document, Excel document. For 10 experiments, I refreshed the document, the first uh, spreadsheet, uh, 10 times, and I obtained these uh, 10 different average times in the system, right? Basically copied the value from here 10 times here, right? It would be good to, to have some kind of automation do this, but of course in simple Excel it's not that easy. And then I can do some statistical analysis on this, right? I obtained average waiting time, average time in the system, sorry, uh, 10 times. So I would like to see, for example, what's the actual average waiting time? I can I cannot determine the actual uh, uh, exactly. I could average this, of course, and I did this here. So I have an average of averages right which ends up being 20.5 minutes but also there is uh, there is a lot of variation here and it's measured by standard deviation 6.6 .6. 
uh, right? And so now I can compute, for example, confidence interval. I know that if you have mean uh, uh, that is computed over a number of samples, 10 samples, this is n, this is just count, and I have standard deviation, I can compute a confidence interval, 95%, it will be the mean minus 1.96 times standard deviation divided by square root of n, right? Uh, and so uh, you will see that the true mean of the population uh, lies somewhere between 16 and 24 minutes with 95% confidence, right? So, um, so w we can do some more complex statistical analysis if we repeat the same simulation uh, in Excel. Uh, and of course, we do much more computation than just one short experiment. So the thing to remember is that practic in practice simulations require longer experiments than we usually do in, in, in classes or in exams, and it, they require repetition of those experiments, multiple experiments. From each experiment we collect a value of performance measured, you just collect your one value, and then, uh, but we could collect multiple, of course, and then uh, we, we do some statistical analysis, like 95% confidence interval. What, uh, what other values we could collect from this experiment? We could, for example, look at average waiting time at the nurse. At the nurse's station, we could see that the average is here in Excel, it shows you 1.3, right? Or we could look at average waiting time at the doctor, is 2.1, so there is more waiting for the doctor. One patient actually waited 10 minutes, which is quite long, right? Uh, and and th these are the typical measures you, you would be interested from, from a queuing simulation.